أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيد محمد أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So this is now the third uh, episode in the series about سيدنا إبراهيم uh, in this, these blessed days of the Hijjah and we learned how سيدنا إبراهيم uh, as a young child stood up against the first two types of kufr those that worship idols and those that worship the planets and then he uh, proceeded and he was uh, to be thrown into or catapulted into the fire thereafter he then uh, contests uh, the ruler, one of the rulers that was being uh, worshipped and this is the third type of kufr in his, uh, in his time and then Sayyidina Ibrahim teaches us what it means to truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what it means for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring life uh, to something that was dead and how this relates to money and giving sadaqah. Now, later on, Ibrahim is getting older and his wife uh, Hajar has uh, a baby and they call this baby Ismail. And Ismail is still uh, feeding from his mother and Ibrahim a.s. all of a sudden tells his wife, we need to go, get ready, we're going to have a long journey. And they go through valley after valley until they get to a place that we now know to be Mecca where there was nothing, there was no, there were no, no plantation, there was no one there, there were no streams, no wells, all signs of life were gone from this place. And then Ibrahim a.s. gets off uh, his beast, his camel or his horse and he helps his wife and son off of their beast as well and he begins to walk away. And his wife, Sayyidah Hajar, is asking him, running behind him saying, where are you going? How can you just leave us like this? And he does not answer. And she continues to ask him and he does not answer. So then she realizes that Sayyidina Ibrahim must be doing this not from himself because he, uh, such a man like him would explain would explain he was too merciful, too kind and gentle hearted just to walk away like that. So she realized that this must be a command or an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she asked him is this from Allah? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who told you to leave us here? And he said yes. In, in, in our current age if a woman asks her husband is this from Allah she's doing so mockingly. She's asking to say have you gone crazy? If a man asks, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a woman or or, or 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 another man, why are you doing this? Are you doing this because you think this is from Allah? They're doing. They're saying this to mock. They're saying this to mock you. But his wife was not asking to mock. She was asking to know to make sure that this was from Allah. So Sayyidina Ibrahim answers. He replies with, "Yes, this is from Allah." And she then replies with one of the most remarkable feats of tawakkul again. And she says. If this is from Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave us to perish. He will not let us perish. And Ibrahim a.s. continued. Now he had left them with only a couple of days worth of food and uh, water. And so when that food and water ran out, so Ismail could not feed from her. And he began to cry and she began to feel thirsty. And as any mother would, she began to run looking for food, looking for drink, looking for someone that could help, looking for anything. So she would run here and she would run there and she would find nothing. So she ran and she was rising up on a, on a little hill or a mountain and we know this as Safa. And she looked from there to find if there was anyone there to see if there, were, if there was any water, anything in the distance, nothing. And she ran back down to where she had left uh, uh, Ismail in this valley and then she continued running she went up to the next one Marwa the next mountain or, or hill and she kept going and she did this seven times running up and down up and down now isn't she the same person isn't she the same person that said if Allah has asked you to do this then don't worry about us so why is she running why isn't she sitting down why is she then running up and down doing Sa'i from Safa to Marwa seven times she's already done it once there's nothing there she does it second time there's nothing there okay now sit down no she does it seven times until she's absolutely exhausted and then she sits down next to Ismail and then Ismail hits the ground with his foot and then as we know uh, Say Sayyidina Jibreel hits his uh, wing at the same time and the miracle of Zamzam happens and up until this day we 
are drinking from this water of Zamzam. So what, what was happening? Well, brothers and sisters, Sai, this doing the physical actions required in order to build, construct, to change, to find water, to find food, to earn a living, all of these things do not negate our detachment from dunya. They do not negate our detachment from dunya. And they do not de negate our attachment solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is Allah that has asked us to, uh, to do this sigh. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has asked us to do this. And so the woman who truly believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this woman who truly believes and who says to her husband, don't worry, do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to do, we will not be lost. She is the same woman that is teaching us that we need to do we need to, if something needs to be done, then we need to go and do the necessary action in order to establish this thing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it. And uh, as, the Prophet, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ You did not throw when you threw. In other words, when you threw the dust in the battle, this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's doing. And when we just do these actions on a superficial level, but as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that does everything. It is only by His uh, will and his command that things are done. And so Sayyidah Hajar teaches us a very, very, very important lesson. The other thing, brothers and sisters, is Ismail Aisam will be the one that will help his father to build, to build the Kaaba. And what a huge honor this is. Will this honor be bestowed upon someone that has not sacrificed? Will this honor be bestowed upon someone that was born with a silver spoon? This will not be the case. This is not the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not the way that things happen. Now let's go back to Sayyidina Ibrahim. He is old and he is being asked to leave his only son and to walk away. What is going on? How come? Now we said previously that Ibrahim salam was the Khalil of Allah. He was the, the love of between Allah and Sayyidina Ibrahim was so intimate, was so intimate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants Sayyidina Ibrahim to have no attachments in this dunya except the attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even with your son, even with your son. But it's halal, it's halal. But no attachments, even with your own children. And this is the highest degree and the highest form of love. Love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love also for his creation because what is creation without the creator? So subhanAllah we can see now Ibrahim alayhi salam is not attached to his wife. Ibrahim alayhi salam is not attached to his son. His wife also very importantly is not attached to her husband. It's very important. You know, the, the, the talks that we usually hear is brothers don't be attached to your wives but also the same. Don't be attached to your husbands, sisters. Don't be attached to your husbands. The husband helps his wife only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked of us to do so. And the wife only helps the husband only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked her to do so. We are not attached to each other. We are not slaves to each other. Some people when they fall in love, you know, you start hearing things like, I need you. I can't live without you. Well, what's going on here? What's going on here? Really? You can't live without them? You can see now that the hearts are being attached in a very wrong way. In a way that actually hurts both of these people that are pretending to be in love, it hurts them. This is not love. Look at total difference between that and between Sayyidina Ibrahim that loves his child. There is no doubting this. And yet he is free. He is still free. His child does not enslave him. Sometimes as we acquire things, as we own things, they own us. They own us. They enter into our hearts. And this is completely the opposite of freedom. And this is the opposite of tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When people attach to dunya, when people care about their children more than they care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when people care about their jobs more than they care about Allah, when people care about their houses and their back garden and their cars and their friends and their career and their social prospects more than they care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to make them lowly. He makes them first into cowards and then with, as with all cowards, someone will come and bully them. Someone will come and transgress against them. We see today in the world that this has begun, people have begun to rise and realize we were cowards. We need to stop now. And people now, for example, in, in Libya or in Tunis or Egypt or Yemen or Syria, 
they're beginning to realize I will sacrifice my life for my son's life. And those that this is not the optimum mental position, this is not the optimum in, in niya or intention. It's not the same as I will sacrifice my life for Allah. Whereas before, they wouldn't even sacrifice their life for their son. They thought that their son needed them. Now at least there's a little, you know, rays of light coming in to say that if you're not there, Allah will, subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your son. And also with what's happening, for example, in this Occupy Wall Street, people are now beginning to realize that I can't stay quiet anymore. I have to get up and I have to say something. And subhanAllah, this is not just a thing for Muslims, but non-Muslims. This is, this is human nature. It's part of our fitrah to realize that when you rely upon dunya so much, then after a while dunya will betray you. Dunya will let you down. When you rely upon your rulers, when you rely upon money, it's okay, don't worry, someone else is getting oppressed, but I'm not getting oppressed right now. After a while, everyone gets oppressed. It spreads everywhere. And so whether it's the Arab Spring, as they've called it, or whether it's uh, Occupy Wall Street, our ability, first of all, to free our own selves from the attachments onto dunya, and then secondly, to begin uh, to speak out uh, and stand up against this oppression. These are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So whenever you speak about against, uh, up against oppression, this is a form of jihad. Uh, and it's very, 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 very well rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even more so in these days of Dhul Hijjah. So remember, the first step is always to detach your heart from dunya. Then the second step is to do. Say the Hajar, say the Hajar shows us how her heart was detached how she was able to say to Sayyidina Ibrahim, yes, okay, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, then we will not perish. But then the same woman, Sayyidina Hajar alayhi salam, is able to then uh, 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 do the sigh seven times and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then rewards them with zamzam. So the lesson to take away from this is detach your heart from everything in this dunya and only seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it means even if it means sacrificing yourself, even if it means sacrificing your wife and your children. And notice what happened, and I'll end with this. Did Hajar die? Did Ismail salam die? No. Today, every year, we remember them. Every year, millions upon millions of people go to perform Hajj, and they all do Sai. And they all go to Zamzam and they all drink from the water of Zamzam and they all bring back liters upon liters on top of their head such that their family can drink from this water and such that they can drink from this water later. All because of a sacrifice that lasted for what, two or three days? The food lasted for two days and then Sayyidina Hajar ran, ran, she did her sai seven times, not even three days. All because of that, we now remember them every single year. So when you detach from dunya, dunya runs after you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that thing that you thought you were going to lose. But when you attach to dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away from you that thing that you lunged upon, tried to hug, to bear hug, to really hold on to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes it away. قُلْ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ Remember me in your da'a. And uh, do leave any comments and inshallah if you've benefited from this video, please do spread it. These are the 10 days of the Hijjah and inshallah your reward will be multiplied. Jazakum khairan, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.